One man that has travelled over east for television and for radio over here, he was famous, he's also done radio over east. He's back living in WA and we're the lucky ones over here because he's back to our state. But talking to John Burgess today, if you haven't worked out who it is, here's Candace Barnes, one of our new presenters. Over to you, Candace. Thanks, Fred. As you did mention, a nice little ray of sunshine sitting next to me on the couch here. John Burgess, thank you for being with us. <laughs> a little ray of sunshine. I think I've been refer referred to a lot of things, but I think, Candace, that's the first time I'm a little ray of sunshine. Hey, first yes. time for everything. I look more like a big black cloud. Oh, don't, don't hurt yourself. You're doing fine. Now, um, we have got a short amount of time to speak to you, and you're such mm. a fascinating person that I'd love to get through as much as we can. Um, you came from rather humble beginnings, as, as many do, and... Look, it looked like professional sports might have been the initial career for you. Yeah, well, I played tennis as a kid. Uh, you know, I grew up in a place called Punchbowl, um, which is in the western suburbs of Sydney. Three people came from Punchbowl, Vince Sorrenti, Paul Keating and John Burgess. Nice. So two out of three can't be bad. You make up your own <laughs> mind about uh, what, who's who. Yeah. Um, then, so tennis led on to temp in bowling. Well, yeah, tennis, uh, when I decided that, you know, I was getting too old at 19 to play uh, tennis, I got involved in, uh, in temp in bowling. It was an uh, inaugural uh, sport. Uh, Brunswick Bowling Equipment Company employed me as a professional bowler. I picked the sport up really quickly. And uh, from that got into, into television radio. So out of school into tennis, tennis into temp in bowling, temp in bowling into radio radio and television never worked a day in my life, really. <laughs> but say, so where did you find time to sleep? It sounds exhausting. Oh, no, well, <laughs> I mean, television and radio, as Fred would know, um, you know, this is, this is, it's not work, yeah, it's not, it's, it's be beach working for a living. You do it for love. It. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, yeah. And, and your career has taken you to several different places around the country. Uh, you spent a long time here in Perth dominating the morning ratings at 6pm. Yeah, breakfast. I came here in 1978. Kerry Packer convinced me I should come. I didn't want to come, to be quite honest with you, because uh, I was uh, living in Melbourne at the time. My mother was still alive then and she was in Sydney, so I figured that Perth was just a bit too far away. Uh, but anyway, in usual Kerry fashion, he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So I said, well, I'll go for two years, Kerry. And I stayed 15. And uh, during that time uh, was the number one breakfast announcer on 6pm for 10 years in a row. Never lost a survey. There you go. So, and then really attracting so much attention that you were offered the opportunity to cross over onto the visual medium. Yeah, well, I've always done television virtually from the time I got into, into radio. I mean, radio's always been my bread and butter. Television's just the icing on the cake. But I had a television show called Turning On in 1968 before you were born. A little most bit. Of people <laughs> around in the studio today. Um, so uh, it was a pop show. It was on at 5.30, funnily enough, on Channel 7. And we, uh, we used to have people, you know, like the Billy Thorpes and the Russell Morrises and, and uh, Ray Brown and all those sort of people uh, on, on the... Mainly, uh, mainly Australian talent. Yeah. So paving the way for people like Molly Meldrum to achieve... Well, yeah, it was sort of done. a... Yeah, it was. You're quite right. It was a, sort of a, a preempt to, to, uh, to Countdown, mm -hmm. uh, I guess. And then, of course, the bandstand had already started then. But uh, So it was, it was a pure pop show, yeah. Who was the... Who was the most interesting person you interviewed in that time of your life? Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Testing you now. Yeah, you I well, I think because I used to, I used to uh, also compare all the concerts uh, at, in Sydney at the mm -hmm. Sydney Stadium, it was known as a big tin shed in Rush Cutters Bay, which is no longer there, but uh, I can go back a few weekends. Uh, uh, and people like uh, the Rolling Stones, the Who, Small Faces, um, PJ Pro, B. Roy Orbison, um, Neil Diamond, uh, I got to meet all those people. So probably the, one of the, the nicest person I ever got to meet, no doubt about it, was Roy Orbison. Just a wow. fantastic fella, and, uh, but such a tragic life he had. You know. Quite so. right, and, and like most of the creatives that uh, float the planet, many are often quite tortured. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, he just had a, just a, a very sad time, but with, mm. mainly with family and things, you know. But uh, he was just a delightful fellow. You're also one of the few people that has made the real successful uh, transition between different stations and different companies, and particularly with, with television. It's, it's not often that people can make such an impact on both seven and nine as commercial stations, and that's really got to be something you're proud of. Oh, well, you know, I mean, it was virtually forced upon me, the move. They gave me the sack. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have much of a choice. Still made quite the impression, though. They got rid of me off uh, Wheel of Fortune, and uh, in June 1996, I'll never forget the day as long as I live. Uh, strangely enough, in November 1996, just five months later, they came to me and said, we've made a dreadful mistake, Burjo. Uh, please come back 
Uh, but in the meantime, I've been talking to uh, David Leckie, who was at Channel 9 in those days. He's now at 7, of course. And uh, I decided, uh, rather than go back, go forward. So I went to with 9. They made me a very nice offer, and uh, that's why I ended up doing Catchphrase. Then, Feels so. good having those options available to yeah, you, though. Yeah, so we're now Wheel of Fortune for 12 years and then Catchphrase for about 8. So about 20 years at 5.30, I've been sneaking into people's lounge rooms. You know. <laughs> so after going crazy in all sorts of different fields, you, you're back home in, well, you're back in Perth, you're, mm. you're home again. Yeah, well, my fantastic. wife's from here. She's, uh, my wife is Italian. Very nice. And uh, that's where the, her family, she came here. She was only about two. She was born in Italy, but came here. And this is where they landed, and this is where they stayed. So she's absolutely wrapped to be back uh, in Perth, because all what's left of them are families here. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and I am as well. I mean, it's a great place. I mean, the lifestyle here is fantastic. The only thing I've noticed, that somebody said to me today, what's, what's the biggest difference you've noticed in Perth? And I think they expected me to say, oh, the skyline and the... I said, the traffic. Oh. I've never seen... <laughs> it's, it's 20 years since I've been here, you know. I just... Oh, God, it took me 20 years the other day to get up the Mitchell Freeway. You know? hey, it's not a pretty sight, certainly in the peak hour times of the morning, that's for sure. But you're at 6IX now, so a nice central east Perth location. Yeah, well, I'm doing uh, breakfast on 6IX. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the blatant plug here. Plug, plug, um, plug. <laughs> and uh, it's nice to be uh, it's nice to be back uh, on the radio in Perth, and we uh, we hope to make a few inroads into what uh, you know some other people have been dominating in the past. Mm. So we'll see what we can do. Now, as I said before, you got your fingers in a few different little pies, so I'm mm. sure we'll still see you around in lots of different regards. You've um, recently done some work for Foxtel with Balls of Steel. Balls of Steel, yeah, that was different. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a shock to a lot of people's system because <laughs> uh, I did the game show segment on Balls mm. of Steel, which. Um, it's probably one of the more mundane segments on that program. It's pretty out there. That and that's program. saying something. It's I a really, it's an, it's a hilarious show. If anyone gets the chance to have but, it, have a uh, it was a lot of fun to do, and I treated the contestants absolutely appallingly. And I mean, they thought they were on a game show. I mean, they actually thought they were on a game show. Well, with, with someone such as yourself, so well known for the game uh, shows. But as well. then it was it was a scam. Yeah, they weren't on a game show at all, <laughs> yeah, and uh, they couldn't work out why I was treating them so badly. So it was it was very funny. Yeah, and I've been doing a few things for today tonight on Channel 7 as well uh, of late. Uh, we did a story on juvenile crime the other day and I've been doing some stuff with, uh, with pensioners and what have you. And also there's a couple of other ones coming up which I can't talk about, Candice. But yet. we'll find out in due course, oh, I'm absolutely. sure. Oh, well, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, something you are quite passionate about is improving the lot of pensioners in this country. What, what brought that such personal... Uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, well, this, this was on a current affair, actually, the, the other team, and uh, they gave me the pension money for mm. the week, and I said, see how long it lasts. You know, well, I went out, put some petrol in the car, bought uh, groceries and stuff, for which a single person would do in for, for a week. Uh, I had... Uh, went out for dinner to the local surf club uh, when I was up in surfers, and, and I had 56 bucks left. So I said, well, you know, I hadn't paid rent, electricity, phone bill, medical. How can people live on this? I thought it was appalling. So I challenged the Prime Minister to talk to me, and everyone said she won't, but she did. But I have to say, she did also. So this was just before the budget came out last year, and she said, John, when the budget comes out, have a look at the budget, see what we do. Well, I did absolutely nothing. Um, she said, then we'll talk again. So I said, I, do I have your... Uh, a guarantee on that? I said, well, if you don't talk to me, would, can my people talk to your people? She said, absolutely. We're still waiting. By Always the way. The way. <laughs> We're still waiting. Well, so maybe as we come up a little closer to the election, maybe we'll, we'll see you have <laughs> another crack at that, Cherry. We yeah, can... well, yeah, well, I haven't given up the cause, I've got to say, because yeah, it is just awful. And uh, we also did a bit of a story on, on electricity bill, which is a major problem here. Mm. Most, that's, that's what most people get, get talking about. But I mean, I didn't want to get no, of course. Heavy or political here. No, this not here, necessarily. It's just I know it's something that's very close to you and, yeah, well, and it's something yeah. that's close to a lot of our viewers as well. well. Absolutely. Well, it's a, it's a worry. I mean, you know, people are going through some really tough times. So if, we can, if I can do something to help, I'm, I'll be absolutely stoked. Should we lighten it up a little bit? Sure. I know you quite you like... You want me to go now? No. <laughs> I know you quite like a joke. Oh, OK. And uh, I've got a joke for you. Oh, have you? With, with permission, may I please tell a joke sure, to the yeah. great John Burgess? OK, yeah. <laughs> please laugh, because it's not very funny. <laughs> OK. OK. Did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? No. Great food, but no atmosphere. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>
Do you know what I think? Pen and paper, I might jot that down. Go for it, by all means. I'll use it on Monday. Feel free to take that one on 6am, it's all good. Very good, Candice, yes. If you wanted to find out more about John Burgess and who wouldn't, catch a, have a little look on the website, it's thecouch.com.au, that's thecouch.com.au. He's a fascinating man and well worth putting him in the Wikipedia if you can. Yeah, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter, I've got my, if you want to, you know, just check me out. The John Burgess, I believe. boring as anything, but check me out. Handle, the at the John Burgess is his Twitter handle. Very funny, definitely follow him, definitely get more involved in, in all of the things he's doing. Well worth, well worth a watch, as always. Thank you very much for being with us, John. Candice, the check's in the mail. Very nice. <laughs> but now back to you, my friend Fred. Thank you, Candice. Oh, sorry, Julia, I'll call you back. That was the <laughs> Prime Minister. She just wanted me to let you know there's two words that have been keeping her busy. Craig Thompson. <laughs> so she said she's sorry she hasn't got back to you. And who was that? Oh, Monica Cost. What was that? <laughs> oh, OK, you'll tell me later. Just talking about today, tonight, what John's coming up. John, can I just ask you a quick question? Sure. No, I never ask quick questions, but what's been the change since you worked in radio in all those years ago to now, what have you noticed briefly has changed in radio? Oh, well, technology's changed. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's uh, obviously, that's the, that's the big thing. I mean, I used to play records and things and then went to records into cassettes and cassettes into DVDs and what have you. And now it's all on computer. What about personalities? Do you reckon oh, there's person I mean, less well, talk now? Well... Well, there can't be less talk. There's people, there's nine people doing breakfast shows. I mean, how does that work? Do you think it's better now or better when we used to be on PM, not the stations, the style of program? No, I think I think the old days were better. They were more uh, fun. Is absolutely. That, would you agree? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it was more personal. I think uh, you you got to uh, relate to the to the listeners more. They, they were more involved in what you were doing. They'd ring you up and talk to you and, and whatever. And I used to answer the phone and talk to people. And I still do, by the way. Do people love hearing you? Do people ring you? Burjo, you're back. Burjo, you're back. Because you used to have the nickname Burjo. Everyone caught on Burjo. Yeah. Do you get a lot of people that love talking to you and just remember you? No matter where you go? Yeah, well, most of them say, you know, I used to listen to you when I was going to school or something, you know. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, thanks okay. very much for that. You know, well, I am older than most people, I've got to say. So. And but it's good, it's great. And, and it, it's, yeah, well, I, I mean, it's very humbling, Fred, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. It's nice to know you were there and you're still there and you're, st you're back here doing it for Perth. We love having you around, love to talk to you again. Yeah. Listen to John on 6 o'clock breakfast, if you, please. If you should, but just give me one second, because yep. Candace did challenge me with the oh, joke okay. thing and everything. Oh, but no. you you did, bring up Would Craig, you, you did bring up Craig Thompson. Mm -hmm. and I, I did Twitter the other day and said okay. on the radio too that, that, that one of the side effects I thought about Craig Thompson was that when he left the Labor Party and he joined the Independents, he raised the IQ level of both organisations simultaneously. And not only the IQ, the credit oh, limit no, on credit you cards. I <laughs> <laughs> still got a John keep Burgess. That, keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, John. You've still got it. And thank you very much to Candice. A lovely yeah. interview. And thank, thank you for being on the couch. It is always nice to have legends on local television here in Perth and around Australia for all those people who love John Burgess. Catch him online. You can listen to 6AX every morning at about 3 o'clock your time at about 5 o'clock. I think it's at 5 o'clock, John or 6? Yeah, 5.30. 5.30. So that see. extra half an hour just to set so you're still doing the research. I am. <laughs> thank you very much. I listened half an hour before. I loved the show. And I thought it was you. Obviously, it wasn't. <laughs> 6IX will be back after the break with more of The Couch.